In this video, we're going to do the maiden flight of the Pay the Piper Piper Cherokee 140 version 2. In this video, we're going to do the maiden flight of the Pay the Piper, Piper Cherokee 140, version 2. So in the first version, of course, I made some, some changes to the plans. The fuselage is a bit more narrower, and there's a few changes. The vertical stabilizer now goes all the way to the bottom part and glues to the bottom here, so it's not uh, weakened up there. And in the first one, we had a 2200 kV motor with a 6x4 prop, a 30 amp ESC, and a 1500 milliamp three cell battery that was 100C. In this one, we went from a six by four prop to a 10 by three point up prop, the same 2200 kV motor, but we went from a three cell battery to a two cell battery, which is necessary for the beginners out there. If you make the prop bigger, you need to desize the battery or get a 1000 kV motor for this prop is what we should do. So this is really a test to see if this cheap Chinese motor which is a, an FT, you see a little brand name there. That's the, the thing, and it does say 2200 KV. So this is a very cheap, you know, below $20 motor with the ESC, 30 amp ESC. I'm gonna see if I can put a two cell battery 10 by 3.8 prop, because uh, something I used to do 10 years ago is the, uh, the Grayson Hobby WellGuard Microjet versions three were able to do that. So this is test to see if this motor can do that. If it's successful, then great. I can use that for other projects. If not, then I'll, I'll get a 1000 kV motor that's meant to go with a 10 by 3.8 Pro. Okay, so that's enough talking and flippity flabbity flow. Let's get this thing in the air. Test flight number one. It's got close to the fence, so I just cut the power and let it drop because I don't want to cause any problems with injury somebody walking on the sidewalk. I'd rather crash my own plane. So did it not respond to the control? How did it? Um, once I, I had already cut the power, I was trying to come in and go around, but then I came too close and then it went straight up and then it started to <laughs> stop responding. So I kept the power down and just let go and just let it fall straight down. Oh, okay. So it didn't go past this fence <laughs> and then cause somebody injury on the other side. Looks like it survived pretty well. Yeah, it definitely broke this little wing tip here. Throttle cut on. Let's just make sure everything's working. Yeah, everything's working. It was very jig joggy because of the wind, although we already know that. We were we just came back from flying in uh, in, in Jim's uh, Piper Wind Cherokee. Oh. 
Hotel Pop, departing runway 17 at Sportsman. McMinnville Municipal Airport. Now we could just barge in and land on runway 22 anyway, but I'm just not going to do that with three other airplanes in the pattern. We're going to go to Independence and uh, lay out over there. In a slight everything at all moments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't mind us dying, but I don't want it to be my fault. <laughs> and, uh, and it, it was definitely a lot of uh, wind shear and it was a lot of updraft. So we had a hard time actually coming down to the runway because of the updraft. So yeah, this was definitely a jiggy joggy flight. And I just realized the, uh, the angle of the motor. I just realized that's oh. not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> but remember the first time I built one of these, yeah. I just bent it up. Oh, okay, that's a good test too to see. I was talking before to see will this combination work? How you know that is by touching the motor. That motor is hot, so no, this is not good. This motor cannot handle it, even though there's a lot less power because of a two-cell battery. Oh, I see that too. There's, okay, I need to take this off so I can see what I'm doing here. Okay, this battery also went way forward. You see that? I had it right about there, okay. right there to the line, and it was all the way, but that makes it more nose-heavy, okay. which is okay. That might have happened when it hit the ground. It very, very well might have. I had this adjusted just perfectly, so when I get it right there, it squeezes a little tighter. But I should put some kind of Velcro strap here. Oh, yeah, that too. It's separated here as well. This whole line <laughs> separated. Usually when you, when you do this, I see I did it here, where you put a bead of glue here, yeah. and then you smear it with a piece of foam, so it makes it stronger than just the glue in between the two layers of foam. Although I discussed all that in a video that I just uploaded about uh, what, six tips working with foam board. That's in there along with many other tips. So you can go back and check that video out. Um, I'm tempted to give it one more flight, but I'm noticing that this toothpick, which is something else in the video I recently came up with, how I make these breakaway motor mounts. I, I make them like this with toothpicks and rubber bands because I would rather break the rubber bands of the toothpicks than break the motor. Right? So this is a proof of concept. We can give that a spin. Yeah, this looks nice and round. It's not wobbling at the end, so you know that your shaft is straight. That's why I do that. We'll take it home and repair it, and we'll bring it out for flight test another two on another day. So I think that's about it for this one. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Will. Have a good one. Later <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah, well, I, it started, you know, I had no power and I pulled, as soon as I saw it was getting over the spent or just before, I pulled up and I was trying to get it to go straight up and do one of those little emergency kind of stall turns, which usually works. This time it didn't, so, but usually I put the power in, but I didn't want to accidentally, put, you know, put the power in that jet over there. So I just, I just cut it and let it fall straight down. Better, yeah. Is this still recording? Well, hello and howdy doody time.